We don't need people that just talk. We need people that have the goods. And that's what we used to say. If you got to have a gimmick, you only need a gimmick if you don't have the goods. And you see lots of people with gimmicks and people that can talk. But you have to actually know something. But you individually, you have to decide this is going to be true for you. Because as you can tell now, especially, you know, I mean, think about this. We're already, most people are already isolated in their homes. There would only be one more step and you'd be in total isolation. And that's if somebody flipped a switch and turned off the internet. You'd pretty much, that'd be it, you know. Uh, for the most part, you'd be totally isolated. <clears throat> so there may be times when you can't get to somebody that you know could help you. See, that's why I have never, in all the time that we've been teaching, I have never even tried to come across as the person you need to get to. I've always shared, I've found things that work. They work in my life. They work through me. I see them work, and I share them with you because I know they will work in your life, and I want you to get it so it's working in your life so you don't need me to lay hands on you. That's, that's my goal. So, and that way, if there was ever a time that you needed something and couldn't get to me, I don't want you to say, well, if I could just get to Brother Curry. I want you to say, you know what? Brother Curry and I serve the same God. He's in me just like he's in Brother Curry, and he can do this through me. So in the name of Jesus, and then you just receive from God for yourself. That's my goal. I've never wanted to be, you know, the, the man, you know, the guy, whatever the guy. I never want to be that. All I've tried to do is share with people, and, and it, it's frustrating to me. Uh, the more I try to share with this with people and go, you can do this, the more they try to put me on a pedestal and go, he's special, he's anointed. Oh, John Lake's mantle. John. I'm telling you, that upsets me, right? That upsets me uh, probably maybe just a little more than whenever I'm gone from here and people come in and they say, I came for Brother Curry to lay hands on me. And whenever they say, well, he's not here, they go, okay. And they say, well, can we pray for you? No, thank you. I've got... You want to you wanna get me upset? That's the fastest way to get me upset. I, in, in myself, other than just the compassion of God, that's when I have said, you know what? If they show back up, I won't pray for them. Why? Because they are trying to make me something that I have not ever succumbed to by other people trying to make me that. And so, I, 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 you know, if somebody, said, if I knew, if somebody came to me, one of my staff and said, that's the person that said they wouldn't let me pray for them, I'd go, hey, you want to be, you want me to pray for it? Come on up, right here. All right, you do it. <laughs> that's what I would do, probably, right? Now, you know, I mean, I admit it, okay, I understand they're releasing their faith and all that kind of stuff, and I have the compassion of God to help. But at some point, the thing that probably aggravates me most is the refusal of Christians to grow up and to quit putting anybody on a pedestal and start realizing the only person that ever was supposed to be on a pedestal, actually was called the cross, is Jesus. Amen. Right? Because I promise you, if they put you on a pedestal today, they're going to put you on a cross tomorrow. Right? Look at Jesus. That's what they did with him. One day they're you know, Hosanna to the king and all this, next day crucify him, or next week anyway. So there has to be the point where we actually, this is real life. This stuff really works. This is not, you know, well, the doctors have done all they can, now bring in the priest and let him give last rites and let him, you know, ease them into eternity. I have never given last rites, right? And never will. Amen? We don't go in there to do that. And now, I, there have been times when I've said, are, are you done with the doctors? Yeah, we're done. Okay, well, now we're in a place that, you know, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll focus on God. Let's go that way. And so we've done that. Now, we've never blasted doctors or blasted people for going to doctors, right? Doctors have kept Christians alive, as I've said before, many times long enough for them to learn how to use faith in God, <laughs> right? Nothing against them. Uh, they do all they can to help, <clears throat> generally speaking. But my faith is not in doctors. <clears throat> my faith is not in anybody that charges me for something they know that would do me good. Right? That's just the bottom line. So, uh, and then people say, well, the doctors, it's a gift from God. Well, if it's a gift from God, why do they charge for it? Okay? Then people say, well, why do preachers charge? Well, I don't know about that either. I don't know why some do, but we never have and never will. Amen? Why? Because what I've learned, we've, sh we've purposely shared, and I've not held anything back. Now, <clears throat> I just want to give you a couple of real quick scriptures because you have to realize this is where your help is. Faith comes by hearing, 
in hearing by the Word of God. So if you're going to have faith, you're going to have to get the Word of God in you first, right? You have to realize God and His Word are one. Do you get that? Amen. They are one, okay? They are together. Jesus is the Word made flesh. He is the Word. He is the Word of God, rightly divided, made flesh. And so we can stand on God's Word. God cannot violate His Word, nor does He desire to. We're not holding God's feet to the fire, so to speak. God has said, I will not alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. I will not change it. He said, what I've said is what I will do. God said that. So all we do to trust God, to have faith in God, is to have faith in His Word. If you do not have faith in His Word, you don't have faith in God. You might have hope, but you don't have faith. Faith in God is faith in His Word. Your faith can do no more for you than your knowledge of the Word of God. Your, your knowledge of the Word of God, has your, your faith has to grab hold of the Word of God. Actually, what it is is that you read the Word of God, you get the Word of God, you receive the Word of God, you believe it, you choose to act upon it, and at that point, your faith is causing it to come to pass. Do, do you get that? But you can't do it beyond what you know to be God's will. And so we can't look at this Bible that we call the Bible and say, well, some of this is the will of God, but some of it's not. No, this is the will of God. Right? Now, in context, <clears throat> and that's why you have to look at certain ways. Now, I will tell you, in the Old Testament, God had to deal with man the way that a just, holy, righteous God had to deal with a fallen man. In the New Testament, God gets to deal with man the way he really wants to, which is by showing man mercy and grace and compassion. Right? Now, not, that's not to say that God is still not you know, just and righteous and you know, all of that. Of course he is. But I'm just saying that now he gets to deal with us. Why? Because Jesus came preaching the day, the, the year of acceptance. He did not come preaching the day of vengeance. He actually cut that off in Isaiah 61 and didn't say that, right? So that's later. So you don't want to be in that group. So last, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about no plague. And we referenced Psalm 91 that no plague will come near your dwelling. Okay, listen. You can say that, but you have to know, you have to know in you, your faith is in God. Because if your faith is not in God, in other words, if you don't look at that and go, you know what, bless God, this is the will of God. It's his will for me, and whatever his will is, his power is there to back it up. So all that it takes for his, say you've got his will, all it takes for his power to back it up is for you to have faith in that will. Do you get that? So once you realize this is his will, it's for me, at that point, his power is released to bring that to pass in your life. Now, did I not just describe how you got born again? Isn't that the same way you got born again? Isn't that the same way you got baptized in the Holy Spirit? Isn't that the same way you get healed? It's the same way you do everything. The way you get in the kingdom is the way you function in the kingdom. Mm 